Welcome to Applications of Integration. So, this first video will be discussing the mean value theorem for integration and average value. So, if you have a function, let's just draw, I don't know why I made it so long. Let's draw that again. Boom, boom. You have a function. Whoa. Look at this incredible function we have here. And so, you can look at these y values and say that the y, the average value is would probably be something like this because most of it is on this line and or above it and there's very little below hand so it's going to be somewhere around here and so we want to first of all find the average value and secondly find what x value this is at. So how do we go about finding the average value? Well, we know how to find the total value under a curve, right? We can find the total value by just integrating it. That's what is an integral does, is finds this total area. So if we divide the integral of a function, so we're just going to this is the total area, so from A to B, we could just divide by B minus A, because the definition of an average is the total of everything divided by the length. And so if we just, so if this is A and this is B, this is the average value from A to B. So let's go do that with a problem real quick. We have this problem here. Uh, it gives us the value of the integral. If we manually integrated it, we could do it ourselves. But we don't have to do that. So now we need to find the average value. So the average value is the value, which is 32 divided by the interval, and the interval is 3 minus a negative 1, which is 3 plus 1, which is 4. So 32 over 4, which is 8. So this is equal to the average value. Uh, F average. So 8 is equal to the average value. So now, what we need to do is we need to find when f of x is equal, or f of some c value, let's say that f of some c value is equal to 8, because we want to find some value that satisfies this. So. And the integral, our integrand is 3x squared minus 2x plus 3. So, now that we know that this is equal to 8, let me actually place these x's as c's because we're, we're technically trying to find some value of c but technically it doesn't really matter what the variable is called. But now we need to factor this. A tutor algebra 2, so we're going to try and see if we can factor this. So we're going to do an algebra 2 method of factoring by multiplying the coefficient by the ending. So we have c squared minus 2c plus 9. This this is obviously not the same thing, but it'll factor to be the same thing once we divide by the 3 in the end. So now we look at this and say, what are the factors of 9? Actually, before we do that, we need to set this equal to 0 so we can do our 0 product property. Um, 
So let's move the 8 over, because I looked at it and I realized we can't factor this. So we're going to actually say 0 is going to be 3c squared minus 2c minus 5. And now we can do the thing. This does not look like a 0. 0. And then we multiply the 3 over, so 15. So our 15 is what we need to add to, and so, or our multiply to. So we know that we need to get 2. We need to add to negative 2 and multiply to get 15. So some factors of 15, the first things I think of are 5 and 3. And we can do negative 5 plus 3. Because the negative the term we need to add to is negative so we're going to do negative five and so we have our values here are um x plus three and x minus five but we have to go and undo our division here or our multiplication so we divide by three in the end we divide everything by three and so we can nicely do this side so it's actually just x plus one this simplifies nicely to one but this does not so instead of just leaving it five thirds we're going to pull the three out front and i know this is bad math for you math boys but this is just how i teach algebra 2 students how to factor and so now we have our thing, and this is equal to zero. And we can do our zero product property saying each of these terms is equal can be equal to zero. So x is equal to negative one, or x is equal to five thirds. This one is a bit easier, so we're gonna basically do the same thing. So our value is 14, and we need to divide by the interval, which is just 2 minus 1, which is 1, which is our average value of f. f average, there we go. So we need 4x cubed minus 1 to be equal to this. And so we can just... Add 1 to both sides, so this is 15 is equal to 4x cubed. And divide both sides by 4, so 15 fourths. And just, and then you can take the square root of, or the cube root of both sides, because this is x cubed, and say the cube root of 15 fourths. Now it's basically the same thing, but we have to manually integrate it. So they give us the function g of x, and they want us to find the average value of g and what x value this occurs on on this interval. So if it's outside the interval, do not exclude it, or do not include it. So we know that the average value is going to be the integral of the function with respect to x over the intervals so from 0 to 2 and then you multiply it by 1 over or just divide by the the interval length which is just 2 minus 0 so we know that with the power rule we take the exponent so this is just technically x to the 0 we take the exponent add 1 and divide by the new exponent. And then we just add 1 to the exponent. So our new function here is x cubed. So this is 3x squared. So, the, so this is x cubed. x cubed minus 2x from 
zero to two. So this is just two cubed minus two times two over two, which is because of the one half. And all of this is equal to two. So the average value average for this function is now two. And so now we need to say we want three. We need to find the value of c that satisfies us. So three c squared minus minus two is equal to two. Well, to solve for c, add two to both sides. That's four is equal to three c squared. Divide both sides by three and take the square root. So these, that is a long thing. So the square root of four thirds, and then we have to do plus or minus is equal to C. Now we need to look at which one, if not both, are value, possible values. And so we can look at this and see is, I should start with the positive, is this in the interval? Yes, it is. It is between 0 and 2. What about the negative 1? It is not because it is a negative number. So C, the final value of C, I'm just going to pull up the square root of 2 on top. It's just 2 over the square root of 3. And if you want, you can rationalize that denominator. All right now we have a word problem just to go with this topic to make sure we understand it. So on a winter day in San Francisco, the temperature in Fahrenheit t hours after 9 a.m. can be modeled by the function t is that. Find the average t temperature from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay, so 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., that is over the course of 12 hours. So the interval is 12, and so if 9 a.m. is 0 and 9 p.m. is 12, then we want to integrate the function t of t, which is brilliant, but sure, 55 plus 14 sine pi t, pi t over 12 dt. And this is a calculator problem, so you can use a calculator here if you really wanted to. So this is about 63.9. And let's see if we need units. We need to find the average temperature. And so this is in degrees Fahrenheit. Boom.